is uh, that I have been talked in my uh, step by step thesis writing all the detail. Uh, mm, uh, pre-test and pilot test, common method variance, uh, uh, reverse coded items, exploratory factor analysis versus confirmatory factor analysis, missing value uh, imputation, all of this uh, uh, I have discussed in my step by step thesis writings. So, however, uh, uh, just uh, uh, for your review, uh, probability we have two type of uh, sampling technique, one is probability sampling technique, another is non-probability sampling technique. In pro probability random sampling, we have si uh, simple random, systematic, stratified and cluster sampling. And uh, non-probability sampling is convenience, snowball, quota, self-selection and purposive uh, sampling. These are called uh, non-probability. I shall not go uh, in detail on all, all of this sampling technique, but sampling technique some uh, pros and in pro, uh, pros and cons. Uh, in the probability sampling, uh, general uh, generalizability is uh, convincing. Convincing uh, its generalizability is high, not questionable. Uh, but in the case of non-probability sampling, generalizability is questionable. That we can generalize or not because we have. Uh, use non probability sampling technique for collection of our data. So, uh, it is generalizability is questionable. Here, uh, the easy to select sample and uh, comply assumption of many statistical uh, techniques. Uh, if you are using the probability sampling, then uh, it is uh, 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 it is complying the assumption of a statistical technique, uh, but uh, in the case of uh, non probability, then it is still questionable uh, and with different type of test uh, that we use for non-probability sampling. And cons is uh, difficult to obtain a sampling frame and difficult to select uh, a sample and potential coverage error and violate assumption of many statistical techniques. So, sample size determination, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, many, uh, uh, many recommendation. Uh, we have many recommendation that is uh, the uh, KZ and Morgan probability sampling and uh, G power and uh, normally G power we used if uh, your population is uh, unknown uh, in that case G power is more effective and rules of thumb for same in a rule of thumb for same you know uh, there is some uh, suggestion uh, the uh, now if your number of indic uh, uh, 1 is to 5, uh, someone uh, recommended, I think, uh, uh, I think, Chin, uh, Chin uh, has recommended 1 is to 5 and another Klein, I think, uh, he has uh, recommended 1 is to 10, uh, rule of thumb for uh, SEM. 1 is to, uh, 1 is to 10 means, uh, for every indicators, uh, you might have the 10 items, like if you have uh, uh, the one, uh, yeah, fifth. Uh, 100, uh, uh, 100 indicators you have to take uh, you have to collect uh, 1000 or in the case of chain uh, you have to collect 500 uh, yeah, observation or uh, samples. So, uh, this is the rule of thumb then a statistical power also can used for uh, uh, determining the sample size. Uh, you can use uh, the calculator robosoft.com or Denny this also uh, will help you to, uh, for calculation of sample size. And we have some pre-test and pilot test requirement uh, as well, uh, your, your indicators is ok, your construct is ok, your reliability and uh, all of these are uh, uh, before collecting of your data. Once uh, you have collect the data, uh, uh, then the you have to proceed for the data analysis. Uh, one is uh, reverse coding item. Uh, anyone can uh, tell you from you uh, that what is reverse coded item? Anyone from you? Uh, what is reverse coded yes, item? doctor. I think. Yes, please. Uh, oh, yes. In my opinion, uh, uh, reverse coding is that, that for example, if uh, there are some kind of negative questions, uh, you are using uh, negative question as in uh, indicators or items, so you will reverse the response of the respondent. For example, on Likert scale, if someone mark 4, so you will write it 2. 
So this is the way through which you can reverse the responses of the respondent. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, brother Faiz Khan. You are welcome. Uh, right. So uh, 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 why it is necessary? Why we use the reverse coded item? Can you tell me? Change the context of the question in opposition. Yes. Actually, uh, uh, to uh, to find out who is the outlier, uh, sometimes yes, attention of the uh, to see the attention of the participant as well, and uh, uh, mainly uh, uh, we uh, try to find out. Sometimes you know, if you give the questionnaire, just giving all three, 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 three like this, or all four, four, four like this. So if it is like this, so easily you can uh, find uh, uh, who is uh, uh, yeah outlying. So for uh, your these outliers uh, 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 yeah, influence your study results uh, rigorously. That's why we want to keep it out uh, so that we can get uh, the original or uh, without bias uh, 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 yeah, results without bias. So uh, that's why uh, it is necessary. Uh, to use the coded item, reverse coded item. Uh, uh, EFA, what is EFA and what is CFA? Anybody has any idea? What is EFA uh, and what is CFA? This is very important. Exploratory effect analysis and confirmatory effect analysis. Okay, okay. So, uh, what does it mean? actually why it is required so efa is the data reduction technique efa is the data reduction technique Doctor, uh, in in the confirmatory factor analysis we confirm the structure yeah. but in exploratory factor analysis we identify we find out which items belong to its construct uh, yes exactly Exactly. Uh, uh, EFA is uh, uh, we required uh, EFA when we develop the instruments. Uh, sometimes, uh, suppose uh, our instrument is uh, uh, is adopted and adapted. Uh, we take this uh, instrument from somebody else uh, who has developed. So we take it uh, for uh, for our own and we adapt it uh, based on our uh, requirement. However, suppose if you have any uh, any uh, construct and uh, few of the items you take from uh, one uh, one author and uh, other you take from another author. So in that case, it is also necessary to do the EFA. It is mandatory. Uh, but if you are adopting the whole and uh, uh, from a single author, in that case, you need not to do the EFA. And uh, uh, confirmatory in the case of confirmatory factor analysis, here uh, we uh, check which uh, uh, these items are representing the same construct or not. So that we confirm here, and uh, uh, in that case uh, we use the uh, same or you know uh, mostly we use in uh, in AMOS, uh, we have a confirmatory factor analysis, then measurement model, then a structural model. Uh, but uh, we do it in the case of a smart PLS, we do in measurement model. But we don't have such concept of, uh, yeah, uh, uh, it, it is called, a smart PLS is called uh, the uh, exploratory. Exploratory in the sense uh, that uh, here we can use uh, new variables. Uh, the uh, the variable uh, uh, that is uh, uh, that is not uh, uh, taken directly from the uh, from uh, from the theory, so that's why it is called uh, uh, it is called uh, exploratory, and we can take a new variable in our model, but in the case of uh, confirmatory, uh, there uh, uh, all uh, all most of the uh, variables we take from uh, 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 from uh, theory, uh, theory or other uh, other statistical uh, uh, yeah, the constructs been used uh, before in other uh, in st uh, statistical uh, technique. So uh, in that case, uh, that is called uh, the confirmatory 
in the case of AMOS and uh, in the case of uh, exploratory, uh, yeah, smart PLS, we say it is exploratory, uh, exploratory tool. Uh, yeah. Excuse me, doctor. Yes, yes. Please. I have a question uh, regarding the CFA and EFA. For example, uh, we are going to develop a scale and some of the items uh, we have extracted from the previous researcher. And meanwhile, we are also conducting semi-structure interviews and we develop some items through semi-structure interviews. So here is the combination of uh, extracting some items or indicators from the literature and some we develop on the basis of the interviews. So in this case, what technique should we follow? Whether it would be EFA or CFA? EFA, EFA first, then we have to do the CFA. We have to do the, okay. must, uh, it is mandatory to go uh, to the EFA first, then you have to go to the CFA. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, missing value imputation, it is not very difficult things. Is there any uh, missing value in your data set? Uh, if you have any missing value in the case of uh, uh, AMOS, uh, your uh, uh, you, uh, your model will not run, but in the case of uh, a smart PLS, it runs, but it will affect to your result as well. So that's why uh, the your missing value should be uh, uh, value change uh, yeah, uh, challenge should be removed. So there are some other uh, some recommendation how we will. Uh, what method we will develop for uh, missing value imputation. So, uh, uh, you can use the mean or median uh, like this. So, that will help you. Uh, most of the cases uh, people use the median or some uh, body suggest it should be mean. So, you can use any of them for in all the cases you can use uh, the same thing. Uh, let's uh, uh, start our basic PLS modeling hands-on exercise. Okay. Uh, here, uh, just uh, this is the basic things that uh, I uh, like to overview first. It will take another half an hour. Then we shall start our practice, inshallah. So, assessment of measurement model. Mm, okay. In uh, there are two uh, types of measurement model one is reflective measurement model another is formative measurement model then uh, in the case of uh, reflective measurement model we uh, uh, we need uh, uh, we uh, we need three requirement uh, for assessing uh, the uh, to fulfill the criteria of uh, reflective measurement model one is internal consistency then conversion validity and discriminant validity uh, and uh, in the case of formative measurement model uh, our requirement is uh, conversion validity, coloniality, weight and uh, significance. So, uh, this is the requirement uh, for the formative and this is the requirement for reflective. So, uh, I shall talk one by one. Uh, so, in the case of reflective measurement model, we need the internal consistency, conversion validity and discriminant validity. Internal consistency can be measured through the Cronbeck alpha and composite reliability. This confront uh, alpha uh, we have recommendation 0.7, composite uh, reliability should be 0.7. Hensler row it is not important uh, though it is it gives by the uh, smart PLS, but uh, it is optional and I never seen any Hensler row uh, uh, are reporting in the thesis. But uh, in the case of uh, conversion validity factor loadings, uh, we need the factor to observe the factor loadings and average variance extracted AVE is very important and I shall tell you uh, how to calculate the AVE and uh, discriminant validity, Farnell Laker, uh, uh, but in the case of conversion validity the AVE automatically comes from our software. So, we need not to uh, calculate it manually and uh, discriminant validity, Farnell Laker criterion cross loadings and heterotrade ratio of correlation STMT. So, uh, these uh, three uh, three requirements uh, we need to fulfill Farnell Laker cross loadings and heterotrade and monotrade ratio. Then uh, reflective measurement model we have uh, uh, suppose 
Cronbeck uh, Alpha measure, uh, measures the reliability of a set of indicators, increases the number of indicators. If, uh, if you have the more indicators, then uh, uh, the uh, yeah, Cronbeck Alpha raise. If, if you have the less indicators, uh, it decrease. However, uh, a value of uh, 0.7 is regarded as uh, acceptable at uh, early phase of research. At a uh, later phase, the threshold uh, sh uh, should be uh, higher for instance uh, 0.8 or 0.9. Actually, <coughs> regarded acceptable in early uh, phase means uh, in the case of uh, your uh, pilot study. Uh, because uh, their number of observation is less, uh, if you have more observation, then uh, the reliability also increase. Uh, so, uh, uh, I shall l let you know, uh, actually point uh, 0.6 uh, is also sometimes acceptable. We have uh, Uma Sakaran, uh, she said the point 0.7 is also acceptable, uh, if other, uh, uh, other uh, constructs uh, 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 reliability is more than 0.7 it's okay so uh, 0 0.7 uh, 0 0.6 is also acceptable in the case of pilot study 0 0.6 that is 4 uh, 0 .7, uh, 0 0.7 is uh, is okay 0 0.8 is very good and 0 0.9 is excellent like this and uh, composite reliability is known as Joras Coase row here the composite reliability should be point a, uh, yeah, point 0.7 at least. So uh, in the case of uh, reflective measurement model, in the reflective model assessment, uh, convergent validity uh, should be uh, factor loading. Uh, uh, we observe uh, in this stage the factor loading and average variance extracted. The loading should be uh, at least point 0.708. Uh, it was uh, in our, uh, uh, recommended by I think Hansler and uh, the higher as well, uh, 0 0.708, uh, but loadings 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 and 0 0.7 can be accepted if it leads to a various variance extracted that is uh, larger than 0 0.5. So, if, you ha uh, if your uh, loadings is more than uh, 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 at least uh, point 0.4 is also you can consider if uh, if your uh, the total AVE is uh, more than point 0.5 or equal to point 0.5 then you can keep uh, the items uh, up to point 0.4 uh, loadings. Uh, according to Holland, he uh, suggests to keep the items if uh, as long as your AVE is achieving. Uh, comp uh, comparable to the proposition of variance explained in factor, uh, factor analysis, value ranges 0 to so 0 0.5 is the in our uh, threshold value, uh, we should comply mm, uh, at least 0 0.5 uh, for our, if uh, it is less than 0.5 in that case maybe uh, uh, less uh, low factor loading item we can uh, delete, if we delete the item then the AVE is at, uh, increase. So, this is the recommendation uh, done by uh, different authors uh, 0 0.708 according to higher uh, in 2017. In 2010, uh, he was suggesting 0 0.7 is okay, but uh, in the Byron, he is telling 0 0.6 is uh, uh, also can uh, also keep if uh, uh, the AVE scores is greater than 0 0.6. Uh, Okay, but uh, according to Byron in uh, 2016, another book, he uh, say, uh, she said, uh, point f uh, 0.5 also acceptable if the assumption result is higher loading scores contributing to AVE scores of greater than 0 0.5. According to Holland, 0 0.4 is also acceptable, but we have to achieve the AVE. How to calculate the AVE? It is not necessary much uh, because uh, it comes, the result comes automatically in our smart PLS. And discriminant validity, uh, the Farnell-Ecker. Uh, uh, anybody have any idea what is Farnell-Ecker? How to calculate the Farnell-Ecker? What is cross-loading? And ho uh, what is heterotrade and monotrade ratio? I think uh, we should share our knowledge that uh, that will help us. Hello, 
Muhammad Faiz. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yeah. So when we do bootstrap, when we do PLS algorithm in hello. Yes, yes. Listening. Please proceed. So when we when we do PLS algorithm in while doing that CFA in. there comes the option when we have to see discriminant validity then we see that foreigner and locker test and criteria on hdm tm okay uh, anybody has any good answer thank you very much uh, brother raja anybody have any idea oh actually farnell lecker is uh, uh, farnell lecker criterion the value of the fernel lecker uh, the uh, square root of ave would be higher than the correlation between the two constructs suppose uh, the ave of uh, two constructs would be higher than uh, the correlation the, the square root of ave of uh, the two construct would be higher than the correlation between them that is the concept of uh, fernel lecker criterion and cross loading is uh, the it, uh, it would be the loading with its own uh, construct the items loading with its own construct would be higher than the loading with the other construct and uh, hetero trade and mono trade ratio is uh, the the, uh, the ratio uh, uh, yeah uh, the correlation value uh, should be uh, less than uh, less than 0.90 uh, and uh, this uh, Point uh, according to Klein, it should be less than 0.85. So this is called the correlation value. If it is uh, more than 0.9, uh, uh, 0.9, then there is an issue uh, of uh, uh, am uh, among the items. So uh, we, uh, maybe we need to delete the items in that case. Mm, okay. According to point eight five, according to Klein, point nine uh, uh, is according to uh, higher. Okay. Uh, discriminant validity. The Farnell-Lecker researcher usually report the correlation matrix with the uh, square root of A B is on the diagonal. Uh, yeah, diagonal. Uh, in an appendix, uh, the AVE criterion and uh, thus the Farnell-Lecker criterion is not the applicable to formative measurement model and single. So the value of the suppose performance, uh, this is the square root of AVE. It would be higher than the value of uh, this. Suppose uh, this is the correlation value between uh, performance and satisfaction, point seven one six, and the ways uh, and performance, uh, it is point. Four six five. It is less than point seven eight. And uh, performance with welfare, the correlation value is point six uh, eight nine. It uh, which is less than point seven eight one. So uh, and see satisfaction. The square root of uh, AB of satisfaction, which is point eight one three. Which is higher than uh, higher than the correlation between ways and satisfaction. It is four four point uh, four five six and with welfare's point six two zero, like this. And uh, find a liquor criterion. I just uh, no no need to have more time over here. So discriminant validity. This is the uh, the items uh, loading with its own construct. Uh, see, this is the loading with uh, the items uh, perform uh, yeah, performance item one three four five six. This items uh, loading with its own construct is higher than the loading with other constructs. Cross loading with other constructs like satisfaction, ways, and welfare. Similarly, satisfaction items it is uh, higher than the cross loading with ways, cross loading with performance, cross loading with welfare. So uh, this is reporting uh, HTMT uh, uh, yeah, output ratio. This uh, is the uh, correlation between performance and satisfaction is 0.812, uh, which is less than 0.85, uh, the threshold value recommended by the 
decline and uh, uh, and recovered it uh, by, uh, uh, by the higher which is should be uh, which is need to be less than 0 0.9 so all these values uh, in our table is less than 0 0.85 that's why we don't have any issue so conversion validity uh, that we can uh, uh, we can uh, we, we can conversion validity discriminant validity all of this we can get from the measurement model uh, P, uh, from PLS algorithm and uh, in the case of mediation analysis uh, conversion validity discriminant validity that we will uh, get from the PLS algorithm and we have to do the assessment uh, of uh, these as well assessment of path coefficient assessment of uh, indirect effect coefficient of determination effect size all of this and uh, we shall talk uh, all of this in during our uh, practical session inshallah so uh, uh, we shall okay uh, but one more thing is uh, uh, the col coloniality you know what is coloniality anybody can talk about what is coloniality association between independent variables pardon association between independent variables okay okay mm, uh, association or any a, any good answer mm. i think is the correlation yes, they are not exactly. highly co yes the correlation uh, 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 among the construct uh, and uh, it should be less than according to higher it should be uh, less than 5 uh, and according to another author 3.3 yes please yes all the exon uh, if the exogenous variable are highly correlated uh, with each other yeah. there is a possibility of polarity in the measurement model yes exactly exactly thank you dr mansoor thank you sir okay. hello yes hello yes please hello uh, cor cor correlation is when the uh, independent variable are highly correlated uh, for example uh, let's say the i square is around 99 percent and uh they are about meaning the error type can only explain one percent of the model from the independent variable hence when this problem is uh found one can introduce variable intra inflection factor to be able to to delete the collinear variable that is causing the problem okay very good Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ismail, right? So, uh, what, yes. is R square, what is R square value? Anybody? Why we measure the R square value? R square. You said? R square value. Uh, Pardon? R, R square, R square. R square. R square. How much the dependent variable and are influenced by the independent variables? If, if it say that 0 0.60, that means that dependent variables we have considered in this study explain the dependent variable by 60%, and rest of the 40% are being influenced by other variables. Those are not being considered in this study. Okay. Thank you very much, brother. Very nice answer. Okay. Uh, yes. It is uh, represent the co correlation of determination. Okay. Uh, and this is this gives the strength of the model as well. Uh, the very uh, yeah. Yes, anybody want to talk? Hello. Yes, but yes. Uh, you you yes the R square uh, is used to measure the variation of the independent variable okay. or the dependent variable. Yes, in the uh, general accepted region should be it has to be greater than uh, brother, 0 0.5. Uh, your mouth is uh, keep a little bit distant so that uh, the sound comes clear. Keep it a little bit distant from you. From your okay, mouth. okay, okay. I said uh, R square is used to measure the variation of the yes, independent variable or explanatory, uh, explanatory variable on the 
uh, dependent variable. Not, uh, uh, is normally not cons it, it, you can say exogenous variable over dip, uh, yeah, dip, uh, yeah, yeah variable yes thank you yeah doctor much. yes thank you uh, yes uh, brother Fokrul, thank you as well uh, it gives suppose 62 percent uh, uh, yeah uh, here and in the case of satisfaction it is also endogenous variable it is showing 40 48 percent so uh, this is how we measure the uh, 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 the uh, assist uh, assessment model uh, by r square inner vif and predictive relevance okay uh, predictive relevance or q square uh, that is been measured by the uh, q square value the cross validated redundancy and uh, 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 and you can say um, uh, cross uh, uh, yeah cross validated uh, CCR uh, uh, and CCC uh, uh, by these two uh, uh, two results we used to get uh, the uh, uh, yeah, uh, measure the Q square value and we used uh, the uh, uh, the F square value as well so this is uh, this is uh, this is how we measure the uh, predictive relevance uh, and predictive relevance comes from the endogenous variables and this uh, should be uh, uh, more than point, uh, zero. point 0.0. zero means uh, if it is more than point 0.0 that uh, we assume that uh, is mute your mic brother, everyone. So we shall uh, talk everything, uh, do, uh, how to uh, uh, all of this assessment uh, requirement and what the results is coming during our practical session, okay brother, we shall not, uh, and this is how we uh, present uh, our uh, path coefficient result or direct effect result, then hypothesis, uh, OS means uh, beta, this is the beta value, uh, this is uh, the unstandard, SM means sample means, uh, that is uh, the the unstandardized beta then standard deviation then t value it should be more than 1.96 uh, in the case of uh, uh, the two tail and p value should be less than 0 0.05 and uh, if it is less than 0 0.05 we uh, show that it is significant or it is uh, if it is higher then we say it is not uh, significant this is how we present the result and uh, mediation effect results uh, this uh, uh, this is how we present or mediation effect result that we will see uh, sample mean uh, OS uh, beta uh, and then uh, sample mean then standard deviation uh, and then bias confidence interval 95% uh, bias corrected. Now what does it mean 95% uh, bias corrected anybody have any answer do you understand it? Hello Dr. Fakrul, Dr. Mansoor what is uh, what does it mean 95 percent bias corrected sir uh, so when we conduct a study there is always a, like biasness or error in the study that how much error we are like allowing in our study so the p value if we are considering the p value and uh, really and uh, relating the p value with our null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis in that case, like 95 percent confidence interval uh, indicates that the result is re replicable in the future. So all the uh, data in this study is like uh, 95 percent error free and in future it is replicable if we conduct the study by using the same instrument in like other particular areas. Thank you. Very nice answer. Thank you very much Dr. Fakrul. Jazakallah khair. So, uh, actually in our social science, uh, it is if our result is 95 percent uh, uh, accurate result comes, then we say we are not assuming that uh, from the social science 100 uh, percent uh, result uh, uh, precision will come. So, uh, uh, in the case of uh, medical science, we want at least 99 percent because uh, uh, we want to ensure the human life. Uh, before implementing any anything 
so in medical science it is required 99 percent but in the case of social science uh, the confidence uh, of our study should be at least uh, 95 percent that means 95 percent precision is required in our study mm, and mediating uh, effect results uh, sample mean uh, the beta unstandard beta standard deviation t value p values and significant in this way and this is moderation effect results and categorical moderation uh, results we will use inshallah we will today we will see uh, uh, male and female is our categorical moderator so we will practice uh, five model in our handsome session uh, one is uh, uh, direct model another is uh, mediation model another is uh, continuous moderator another is uh, categorical moderator that we will do uh, through the multi group analysis and uh, multi group analysis and we shall uh, practice the higher order construct okay so uh, this is uh, uh, this five model we will practice today inshallah uh, okay we shall start from our uh, basic model that is the uh, direct model the uh, uh, direct model uh, we have uh, two uh, uh, you can say um, uh, two construct two independent variable and uh, one dependent variable uh, two independent variable is ways and welfare and performance is our dependent variable we shall create we shall practice it first then we shall go for the mediation model then uh, the continuous moderator uh, then uh, multi-group analysis then a higher order construct so preparation uh, of our yeah uh, so uh, one thing i need to talk uh, actually uh, today uh, last night i cannot uh, yeah uh, sleep properly that's why i'm feeling a little bit uh, sick and i'm not um, feeling well uh, so uh, please excuse me if uh, i'm feeling uh, tired and uh, any sickness uh, i'm not uh, vigilant enough so i'm extremely uh, sorry for my performance low performance so however uh, uh, let's see uh, uh, you know uh, <coughs> the uh, smart PLS cannot uh, 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 cannot read the uh, SPSS file. That's why if uh, you have collect your data and given input in SPSS, you have to convert uh, this uh, data SPSS data into CSV file. So uh, if you go to your uh, 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 your materials that I provided. Uh, to you so if you go there uh, if you uh, see the uh, uh, SP, uh, smart pls workshop material you will find the spss data as uh, as well as csv data so uh, i shall show you how to convert the spss data to csv file uh, into csv file uh, or uh, if you do not have uh, if you have the issue of spss if you do not have any idea so don't worry i already given the same data in csv file as well so uh, let's check uh, here uh, just everybody please uh, follow me uh, did you get this file uh, uh, this folder uh, workshop materials everybody you have to be very uh, yes yes Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Just yes, yes. go to that workshop materials. Then you will find here uh, uh, this SPSS file, file number two, PLS practice data set. Okay. Just open it, and I'm going to show you how to convert the data to a CSV file. Actually, uh, a smart PLS just uh, can read uh, the csv file Uh, 
just a minute it is uh, taking time to open